We would like to start off our show by acknowledging the Yugambeh people, the traditional owners of the land on which this podcast is recorded. We would like to pay our respects to their elders past, present and emerging. Excuse me, I have something to say. This is the podcast where we have real and open conversations with everyday people, professionals, and public figures who all have something to say. I'm your host, Sean Philip Naylor, and you can join me every fortnight as we dig a little bit deeper into our shared human experience. You can join in on our conversations by heading over to the show's official pages and sending me a DM. You can share with me your own experiences, opinions, and feedback on the show over on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at excuse me underscore pod. You can find us on Facebook if you search Excuse Me I Have Something to Say or through our official website, excuse me I have something to say dot com. And don't forget that you can rate and leave a review of the show, which is going to help our conversations reach a wider audience. And remember to share, like, and subscribe so that you never have to miss a show. Hi guys, thank you for joining me this week for another fun-filled episode of Excuse Me. I'm excited for today's show, but as always, I'd like to start off with a little gratitude. Thanks to all of you lovely regular listeners for tuning in once again. And a massive hello and welcome to anyone who's tuning in for the first time. Welcome to the Excuse Me family. We're happy you could join us. If you like what you hear, please remember that you can rate and review the show and don't forget to subscribe. Now, on with the show. Today, I am so excited to introduce you all to the always lovely and incredibly inspiring Terry Hawkins. Terry is an accomplished businesswoman, a business consultant, a best-selling author. Terry is a retail specialist and education architect and the custodian and navigator of her newest venture, Ignite Worldwide. Terry, welcome to the show. Yeah. I'm glad I was sitting down to read that. I almost lost my breath. You've uh, accomplished a lot, but uh, I guess it must be really amazing to look back at everything that you've achieved in your life and career. But can you maybe start by sharing with the listeners a little bit about yourself? Who is Terry? Wow, that's a big, uh, big question. It's so funny you, you say look back on your life because I, I always used to make the joke that life only made sense when you stopped and looked back because if you stand still and look forward, freaks the hell out of you. Uh, so <laughs> it's like, what am I doing? Where am I going? You know, like it's been, uh, you know, obviously it's been a very, very long career and long journey and not to waste you know too much time just on you know my story but you know grew up in a very challenging family experience I suppose had a lot of I'm not gonna I hate to do the drama around it but lots of abuse lots of uh, very violent family poverty all that sort of stuff had physical you know warts all over my body and over my face and you know grew up with that I had eating disorder you know I mean, honestly, if you could line it all up, you go, really? It's like I was a dartboard and I was right in the middle. Oh, and so, <laughs> thing. and I, I think people also, you know, have such an attachment to their story. Whereas, you know, I was lucky enough, I was just saying to a girlfriend, um, and, you know, the topic today is, of course, the seven year cycles. And I was just talking about, you know, the, the advice I would give to 21 to 28 year olds. And I was so fortunate that I actually fell into education and development unwittingly from 21 to 28. And that actually really influenced my life. So I got into education and training when I was, you know, a baby, like 20, 21, didn't know what I was doing. I worked in fashion retail for about seven years, um, held, worked for, came from the floor, um, worked, worked in national roles, then became you know, a national training manager. I created a, a lot of my own content. And then I went and started my own company in 1989. So um, people in progress, I had that for 27 years. Um, and then I decided to get a business partner five years ago that went down the path of the technology side. Um, and that's just recently finished. And so here I am today and I've got Ignite Worldwide, which I'm very excited about, uh, but it's still the same, you know, it's the same, but different. And yeah. so, um, but yeah, but that's me. Okay. So while we're talking about Ignite Worldwide, can you tell us a little bit about it? What, what, what you're hoping to achieve with it? And of 
uh, I guess another great question is why would you call yourself a custodian and navigator of Ignite Worldwide? Great question. Because I've spent, you know, over three decades in the education industry and my past, the reason I shared my past a little bit was because we, and, you know, I hope this doesn't offend anybody, but we have been a male driven world. You know, we've, it's, for 2000 years, if you go back to the, you know, ancient times of the pyramids and so forth it's been a very very cognitive driven world and so you know I'm so grateful to my past because I took a lot of that and I think what a lot of us bring through our life is our experience and we've been cognitively led for 2000 years and I think Einstein said so beautifully um, one of the saddest days on the planet was when we valued intelligence over intuition and so I have always been intuitively led and what we're supposed to do is, you know, lead intuitively and then bring it up into the cognitive to make sense of it. And so um, I was able to take all of the learnings that I had in those early years, all of the learnings that I got when I was very young, you know, in my early 20s. And so I was able to then seed that personal growth element into business and corporate education and had phenomenal results. And so all of our, if you look at the male, and it's not just men, I want to be really specific, it's not just men, it's masculine. Because I know there are women, like a lot, often a lot of people say to me, you know, I'm like, I'm, I'm quite masculine, like I'm a real tomboy. So I'm a, I'm a, a boy girl, if that makes sense. Yep. You know, and then you've got girl girls, and then you've got girl boys, and then you've got boy boys, you know, yep. your height of a male. So, you know, if you look back on our history, everything's army war time. Yeah. CEO, yeah. general manager, tooth this, tooth that, you know, and I hated that. And it's all, there was a great book written many, many years ago called Blue Water Strategy. And it was all about leaving the shores and going into the blue deep waters to discover new ways and to be an explorer rather than the red bloodbath of the way business usually is, which is competitive. You know, I've got to kill my competitor. I've got it's dog eat dog. There's not enough room. It's, it's a scarcity based model. And I've always believed that. You know, there's enough for everybody. Curiosity is our greatest captain. When I was able to start again, and it was hard, you know, I had to start right from square one again. And I thought ignite because one of the things I love about the education that we do and when I speak and whatever it might be is the whole goal is to ignite that human spirit. So. Oh, I love that. Beautiful. (laughs) That's amazing. So with ignite, I guess, just while we're talking about it, I don't know if you're how it works, if you're taking on clients or anything, but if anybody is, I guess, intrigued by what Ignite Worldwide is, how would they uh, get in touch with you or where can they follow to, to follow your journey there? Oh, gosh, I love this. You know, we're getting the phone numbers at the beginning of the date. I think it's fantastic. And one of the things I loved about you too is when you said, and here's a bit of gratitude, because I'd love to speak to that today too. And I think, because I think we live in a world where people are falsely spiritual when it comes to gratitude, yet they want free content. And I'm I'm just about to launch an article on it, but they want free content. And yet we feel a a little bit embarrassed to go, could you follow me? Could you like, could you share? You're an actual fact. It's an energy exchange. So I love you for that. Thank you. So it's just ignite hyphen worldwide, ignite hyphen worldwide. There's an amazing company called ignite worldwide for girls technology, which we're not, but ignite hyphen worldwide.com. And it's just, yeah, my email is just terry at terryhawkins.com. And our email is curiosity at ignite-worldwide.com. <laughs> I love it. I'll put um, the links to your socials um, and your website into the show notes as well. So anybody watching love or it. listening who wants to get better acquainted with Ignite Worldwide, just click on the links that will be in the notes for, for all of you. Terry, you and I, we first connected a little over a year ago when the company that I worked for, I still work for, embraced one of your older, I guess, programs. One of those retail initiatives to, I guess, help people become better sales salespeople. And I've done a few of them in my time in retail. I've been working in retail since I was 16 years old, pretty much, with a, a short step away into hospitality. Um, And then I went back to retail because I do enjoy it. I love it. But yeah, I've done so many of those different ones that companies produce and, you know, online trainings and things for people to to watch videos and learn. And I'm not going to lie. I had some preconceived thoughts when I was told that it was something that I had to do with the company. Well, I guess what I'm trying to say is with you at the helm, you're very engaging. And I don't want to say that you made that learning fun but you you did you definitely did Mm -hmm. and you brought a real freshness 
to 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 revitalize my own energies within within that sector so but I, I just want to say thank you for mm. not being one of those straight down the line boring people you're so relatable and imagine how Wide excited 143 <laughs> <laughs> yeah and imagine how excited I was when I did um I did a learning with them and um I wasn't expecting to jump on a zoom and have you there so I'm I'm really grateful for for that connection and being able to I guess Me too. use that connection to have a better conversation a bigger conversation you know taking that experience of working in retail and learning retail and then you spoke to something that really spoke to me you know we are well, obviously you cover a lot of ground in those training sessions and it was in the the zoom the one-on-one education obviously we would have seen you in person if it wasn't a COVID world that we were living in at the time but one of the things that you really spoke to is what we're going to talk about today which is the seven-year cycles I guess it was more the human aspect and I was going through something personally in my in my personal life with my husband, which sort of when you started talking to seven year cycles and the time frames of which they are in our lives, it really just put all the pieces into place as to where my husband was at and where I was at. And there is an eight year difference between the two of us. So we're almost always going to be at different points in those seven year cycles within our lives, mm. which will make, I guess, any relationship challenging. Now, enough of me rambling <laughs> about my No, no, that was life. so good. But yeah, can you start off just by explaining a little bit about what the seven-year cycles actually are, what it means? Absolutely. And I think one of the things too, just to frame it um, well and to give context, because you know, there's so many education systems that I've created, and that's basically what I do is create an entire system for an organisation. And then we have various trainers and so forth that also facilitate. What we do in, when we come to, into anything is bring our self And that self has so many dynamics. So there's horizontal typology and then there's vertical typology. So horizontal, imagine a line if you're listening to this, and then vertical typology, a line going upwards. And so, or vertical experience, I should say. Horizontal typology is flat. So everyone does profilers and it doesn't, you know, the main one that, you know, you see a lot of these days is the Maya Briggs type indicator, which stems from, you know, first started out, I think it was um, Hippocrates and then it was Plato and Jung did some work. And I think Jung just d- divided it into the 16 PF and then it moved further into it. And then, you know, the Maya Briggs mother daughter team and then turned it into the MBTI. So MBTI is just one profiler. But what people do is they identify with one thing. So p- personal awareness and self awareness is not a one stop shop. There are hundreds of different profilers and the seven year cycles is just one slice of that. And then inside of that, we have the vertical experience and that is the spiral dynamic of who you are as you journey up into your life. If you can do one thing, I think, in the world for yourself and for others is to be self-aware and self-awareness on the ladder of, and I'm using ancient wisdom here, self-awareness on the ladder of awareness is about fourth along. So we have, and I'm, the reason I'm saying this is because people will bring their own bias as they listen to this. They'll go, oh, no, that's not right. Or I don't have any personal problems or, you know, and you just said you had a situation in your personal life. Now people will hear that based on their own reality. They won't hear what you actually said. They're going to hear what they said based on all those filters. So we have no awareness. So you don't know, you know, we, we know all the catchphrase and it's getting scarier as we go along. We know all the catchphrase like, you don't know what you don't know. You know, but it's true. You are literally blind on every level when you have no awareness. So you have no awareness, then you have awareness. So all of a sudden, and that's usually the reticular activation system or something in the brain that, you know, a baby doesn't, uh, is totally unaware of what solids are until now they're still not aware of what they are. It's just, you know, does that make sense? Like it's like tying a shoelace, doesn't it? So we have no awareness, then we have awareness. From awareness, then we have growth. So we have an awareness that, um, you know, there's something outside of us or whatever it might be. Then we get, oh, I know, here we go. Let's say you have no awareness that you are an angry person. Yeah. You've grown up in an angry environment. You, you're this. What? So then all of a sudden someone says to you, well, you're angry. And you go, no, I'm not. I'm not angry. And then all of a sudden someone else says it, whatever. And all of a sudden you go, huh, I'm angry. Now you have growth. Now you go, interesting. So now you're growing. Now you still don't have self-awareness. You just have awareness. 
So then what happens is you start to take it on. Then you get self-awareness. Now I'm aware of myself when anger comes up. From self-awareness and owning your own anger, from that then becomes, well, now I understand and have compassion. Empathy kicks in. So empathy is four rungs up the ladder. And people go, we're going to learn empathy. I know. Isn't that amazing? Four rungs up the ladder. And so we have empathy. Then once I have empathy and compassion, I have unity. Now I can understand my fellow man. Now I can understand, you know, what your experience is. And I can put myself in your shoes emotionally, not just cognitively. Then from that, then we actually can gain collective wisdom. And from collective wisdom, then we have infinite possibility. So, you know, that's just to set this up for wherever you're at on these, on this stage of life. Um, the seven year cycles may not hit right at this point because you may not like what you hear. So if we don't like it, we're going to repel it. And the reason I say this is because I'm going to start with now. This is Rudolf Steiner. So Rudolf Steiner was one of the forefathers of the seven year cycles. Um, it blows my mind that we haven't actually done much of it. I share this in nearly every group I go to and people go, oh, can we do the seven year cycle? <laughs> because it's, it's so like interesting. Looking, it's so it's interesting. Isn't it? And you look into a crystal ball and you go, what the hell? Now, when you marry this up with Claire Graves, so Claire Graves was around the same time as Maslow, but he wasn't published. And so Maslow even says, you know, the hierarchy of needs, Maslow even says his work was much better than his. Now, people will go, that's why I always make the joke when I go, you know, all the great teachers of the planet, like, you know, um, you know you've got Jesus and Krishna and, you know, Muhammad and, you know, all of the whatever, you know, Mother Teresa, whatever. And people go, yeah, like they're it. And I go, no, they're the only ones that they were published. You know, but what about all the ones that weren't published that we don't know about? So it's the same with, with this. So Claire Graves wasn't published. And when you do this, the, marry the seven-year cycles up with Claire Graves' values, mnemonic like layers, it's sort of, this, it's very similar. It blows my mind how it lines up. So let's dive into it, won't it? Yeah, 100%. Let's do it. So we have 0 to 7, 7 to 14, 14, 21, 21, 28. We'll yeah. start all the way through life, up to 84. And then 84, you start again. Now, this also links into numerology. So isn't that interesting? So we go, yeah. what? So at 84, how many 84-year-olds do you know that's, that become this, like, child again? And they go, I'm going to jump out of a plane or I'm going to stop. Yeah? Yeah. And there's that beautiful, um, I think it's Tennessee, Tennessee Williams, I'm not sure, where it says, to go through the entirety of my life, I'm butchering it here, to go through the entirety of my life and to arrive back at where I began and to see it for the first time. And so I think that's what happens when we get to the end. Um, So zero to seven is when our belief systems are formed. We're very much unconscious, you know, in that space. We don't have reasoning until we're seven. And so a lot of what happened to us when we were zero to seven, we take with us for the rest of our life, but we don't realize it. We don't realize that we have these unconscious triggers or whatever. Seven to 14, you know, is usually like eight. It's whatever's happening to you around eight is when you, usually anchor like your value a main value not values as in you know trust respect you know like I was splitting up with my partner my my husband and I remember Jackson was about eight at the time my youngest son I remember saying anyway he was dating someone else and I said oh this could be you know could get a new you know could be someone else that you get to meet and Jackson was like anti and he goes I'm never getting married and I said why (laughs) he goes because you just break up. And I went, oh, my God. Okay, I've anchored that one. So um, that was zero to 14. So, and also you start to model. So you start to find models, you know, like, and unfortunately we don't have very strong adult models now for these kids. Uh, 14 to 21 is when you are you lose, your, you know, you lose all the wiring in your brain and you end up, I think you lose about 20, uh, what is it, 75% of your reasoning power. It doesn't come back until you're about 24, uh, the frontal lobe. But then we hit 21 to 28. I'm assuming that most of your audience are 21, let's say, I think you mentioned up probably up to about 50 plus. Plus, yeah. you know, we're going to go further. So 21 to 28 are the experimental years. And don't we know that? We don't, I don't have to tell you that. Mm-hmm. So, to, you know, when you look back on New Year's, 21 to 28 is you'll try anything, you do everything to the max. You know, you party hard, you play hard, you love hard. I mean, you just do everything hard. You end up, it's quite, people will say, oh, they'll blame a, like a generational thing. Like, oh, millennials or whatever. Yeah, you know, I you we've all heard that, haven't we? I know, and it's actually, it's not, it's a seven-year cycle. And so they want to try new things, you know, that's why. It's also, if I could say, give one piece of advice to the 21 to 28-year-olds, and this verges into the next seven years as well, but it's to be the apprentice 
you know, to be the apprentice. So often this age group is so busy proving that they know because it's also the seven-year cycle of insecurity. Now, if you sat in and dropped into apprenticeship, you're testing. So you're testing things because you want to understand your brain or your body, whatever the soul, whatever you want to call it, is trying to work out what you're actually really good at. So be the explorer, be the apprentice. Stop expecting to be good at things. You're not going to be. You're not supposed to be. And I and I actually see it as being a real hindrance to people because if and I I, I know I don't want to I want to move through all of them, but because this is a huge area, this area and and 28, 35 as well. When you don't allow yourself to do the work in 21 to 28, it will come back to bite you when you're around 42. And I'll explain that shortly. Okay. Because we're in such a rush, we've got to prove it. Yeah. So drop into, which I'm really, and I've done this in my programs, and I think this is probably what you were um, referring to before. We have we have feeling. We're a feeling. We're, that's what that's what makes us human. We have feelings. Yeah. Feelings can then. So a feeling is a. It's I, I call it a chemical reaction. But chemical reactions are you know are like on a neuro level, on a physical level, and also you know, on an emotional level. So we have all these these different chemical reactions that occur, a biochemical reaction. And so the language of expression of that is called emotion. See, so I have a feeling, a chemical reaction that then presents itself as an emotional reaction. Most of 21, 28 year olds, not you. If you get heat on it, I go, if it stings, let it stick. Love if it. it's true, let it be glue. And if it's wrong, let it be gone. Yeah. So this generation, because of my generation, we stopped you feeling bad. And this is in my book, The Perfect Storm. So we said it's bad to feel bad. Now, that's just not an emotional or a a, a philosophical viewpoint. We actually thwarted the development of your neural nets around being able to feel. So that's why when you give feedback to a 21 to 28 year old, it is like you have whacked them across the head with a sledgehammer, you know? So people will go have stress leave because someone gave them feedback and they didn't know how to handle it. So what I do is if I don't know how to handle it, I will hand it back to you. I will go, I'll make you responsible for how I feel instead of going, how interesting. So this is our biggest service that we can do to this age group in this time frame is to teach them how to drop into, and I'm doing a lot of that work in my trainings now. So, you know, they come in for, like you did, a retail training, and all of a sudden we start to teach them about the, the chemical reaction in, in their body. You understand that? Then that becomes powerful. So 21 to 28-year-olds, learn how to embrace and love your feelings. Feelings, it's an emotional roller coaster. Oh, sorry, emotional Ferris wheel. No emotion was meant to keep it, make its home in your body. No emotion. No, not happy, not ang- anxiety or anxiousness, not sadness, not anger, not none of them. So 21 to 28, get to know your emotions. They're like all your children and they're all gorgeous. So you've got to love them all. So then when you come out of 21 to 28, so you're getting into 28, you're now starting to get a real feel for what you like, what you enjoy. Uh, what your natural talents are and 28 to 35 35 to 42 these are called the power years and so 28 to 42 but well, we'll just go 28 35 is when you start to go okay this is good I'm feeling really good here usually around 30 you get depressed because you thought you're going to be so much further along in your life, you know? <laughs> <It's true. laughs> is it true it's so I always true. Say to people, like I just relax it's all right we all have the same thing I had a wake on my 30th um <laughs> I was going through my first divorce, so, you know, it's all fun. And so we do, we put so much pressure on ourselves to be somewhere or be someone at a certain point in our life. You know, that we'll also say, usually what also comes up at that stage, if you're, if you're brave enough, once you come out of it, you start to feel confident, then life goes, smacks you in the face again. And your stuff really comes up. Now, if you do the work, then it's not going to revisit you when you're 56. Okay, I'm cool? hearing I've got some more work to do then. Because I feel like in my... I'm 36 turning 37. So I feel like I'm at some sort of turning point and the past couple of years have been really interesting. And, you know, COVID aside, just like on a personal level and and this is again is why I find it so interesting because everything that you speak of, it does ring true. If you actually sit back and you listen to it, it's like, well, yes, I did when, you know, when I was 30, I did have that pressure on myself. Where am I going to be by the time I'm 30? And as we all know, time moves so quickly. And then mm. you get to 30 and you're like, oh, well, I haven't done anything I wanted to do. And then now being that that 36, 37 mark recently married, I'm just like, kind of like, well, what, what happens now? I'm definitely, as I'm getting older, I, I'm falling into that, what you're talking about, I guess, finding your power and, and doing things that I guess are more for me. 
So I'm doing a lot more creative things now, things that I wanted to do that were creative when I was younger, but I guess didn't have the drive or was too concerned about what other people would think to, to actually go ahead and do things mm. for myself. Um, mm. Even, you know, even creating the podcast, it came out of a really organic uh, a loss, loss of a, of a good friend to cancer. And then it was, it's sort of, it's just grown and grown and grown to be this creative endeavor that forces me to have conversations like this, which most people, I guess, don't want to do that. I guess what I'm saying is I'm trying to do the work. I don't necessarily know what that means or what that looks like. Oh, that's good. But I'm trying and I'm listening, you know. What is do the work? Yeah. Yeah. I think you, I mean, you've just said so many amazing things. And, and not about all of it's about our age, you know. I think what COVID did do, I because I, I lost everything, like, and not just because of COVID, you know, also because of this, you know, technology business that I got into because of a mismatch there, because of, you know, there's so many things. But and at my age, it's very difficult to start again. You know, it's very difficult to go. But I think the best thing that I loved about COVID, I read this and I, I used to train this. I still train it. I do it with executive groups and Daniel Pink is an incredible anthropologist. You know, he's just the most amazing author as well, but he made the coin, the phrase, and I'm going to, I'm not doing it right here, but when you take the issue of money off the table, people can do their best work. Isn't that beautiful? Mm -hmm. So I sat here and I was, I thought, well, how much do I actually need? Like I've always made a lot of money because it's never been my driver. And so, uh, and I've also had kids and I've had homes and I've had school. I'm, I've been a solo parent, you know, so I was always chasing money. And then I sort of wrote and I thought, I thought about what he'd said. And I thought, what do I need to keep myself happy outside of what everybody else thinks outside of my postcode, outside of, or zip code if you're in America, outside of how do I look outside of what does successful externally look like when you just get COVID got rid of all that and made us all go, what is important to you? So I don't necessarily think it's, I feel like you're getting closer to 42, you know, so there's the whisper, like some of the things that you're saying there are very typical of that, where you start to go, you know, what am I going to do with the rest of my life? And we'll get to that when we get to 42. And then what's doing the work look like? To me, doing the work is dropping into self. It's so easy to blame. And I, we've all done it. I think there's a journey through that, you know, where and I do pit and flip, you know, my pit man and flip man. I love pit man and flip man. Oh, I love, I love them too. <laughs> um, and we do blame. And I think, you know, people will say, oh, you know, you're being a victim. And I go, you're a victim when you're in the pit and it's someone else's fault all the time. But there's a difference between blaming someone and holding people accountable. Yeah. There's a very distinct, strong distinction there. And I think this is what happens in life is that we get these sound bites, you know, you get 12 year olds on Instagram giving you life advice and you go, what the hell? Like, really? <laughs> yeah. Or they've rehearsed it or they're reading it. And I go, do the work. Yeah. Do the work. Stop. Let's stop being bedazzled by people who sound wise. Like I've had 15 year olds who have floored me. I've had my kids when they're four or five have said things and I've gone, it's been a, you know, like one of those life changing moments where you just go, whoa. So yeah, but I would say what was the seed that was planted? So doing the work might be dropping into when you started your podcast that gave you an insight, a clue. And it's not the presentation of that, if that makes sense. Yeah. There was something in you that had this driving force. It was like, I have this insatiable urge to and the podcast became the vehicle for you to do that exactly yeah so there could be a hundred different podcasts yeah could be a book could be you become an interviewer could be that you whatever it might be you know you run travel groups the seed that was planted back then that's the piece of doing the work to find the seed to find because people will say intention what's your intention i think that's just a i'm not sure i like that word but anyway yeah does that help that does help thank you all right so when we get to 28 to 35 this is when we start to consolidate what we've got from 21 to 28 this is where we also have this free will like now we're at this place where i don't feel like i have to go to people or you know you've got this looseness about you like it's like ah, i got this i'm feeling good about this yeah like you get your little bit of sass great sass energy about you and you want to do things on your own so if you're an employer of people in this age group you've got to give them their own gig you know and then personality comes into all this and temperament and whatever but you know you'll often find it'll be like that people will want them to have their their name on things or they want mm -hmm. to create their own this or whatever it might be so yeah so 28 to 35 but you're this is when you're entrepreneurial this is when you're creative this is when you're you know you've got your, your, your oh there you go this fits perfectly for you you know you've got those amazing all those gorgeous juices just sort 
sort of pumping through your body going, you know, you're competitive, you're driven, all those great things. Now, the other thing that occurs though, is what else happens around 28 to 30? We usually find a life partner. We usually decide, well, I love you. I love you too. Well, let's buy a house and make sure that we're, you know, just have a mortgage for the rest of our lives. Fantastic. So we can spend the next 30 years paying it off uh, to then die. You know, I'm just being horrible here, but (laughs) it really is a dumb society that we've created, isn't it? It is. And so, you know, I'll just take it. It's all called a, you know, a prison, but we end up getting married, getting mortgages, maybe having children. Now, all of a sudden we have debt. We need security and look at the conflict. So at the very same time that we're, we want to take off, we then get into the societal norms that then pull us back down. And I often, when I'm working with companies, big organizations, and they're in a creative space, especially if they've got a low staff turnover, like a low churn in that creativity sector, it's usually because the creative people have stayed too long, not too long, but they've stayed in, and they've moved into their 28, 35, 35, 42. And so they've stopped being edgy and risky. So they've, they've, their product becomes more boring and so you've got to do work to help them get back into that creative space. Okay, so are there any questions around the 28 to 35? No, it, it's, I, I definitely just, it just rings so true. And Beautiful. yeah, this is this is why I really wanted to share this with the listeners. Yeah. Hoping that some people out there can get, maybe get a bit of a, a better relationship with themselves, a better understanding of themselves wherever they're at. Um, you know, I, I, I've got to say the more you, and this is just one of hundreds, like I'm doing it. Oh, here we go. If you're in Sydney. So I'm doing it. Oh, and this is my first sort of public program with Ignite, even though it's the same, you know, like I've run programs I've, and I've d- delivered in front of over half a million people so it's not like a you know but in a in a training room a facilitation of people's learning uh, there's probably over a hundred thousand people and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at all of the different modalities that we use that all that we can have insight into that give us understanding of self the more i understand myself and try that on for size like i try everything on for size i'm pr- grateful to my past and the insecurity that came with that and the self-doubt and i mean i was a tortured soul for a lot of years but i love it because you could say to me you know you're, you're whatever i'm just trying to think of something you know you look like a banana. I would try that on for size because I would be, I would think, oh, well, they probably know me better than I do. So I tried on for size. Someone just told me just recently, you know, that you, you can be quite rigid in my thinking. And I go, yeah, I would agree with you. If I'm speaking to someone, who has absolutely no idea about what we're talking about. I am so rigid. I am so rigid. Trouble is, most of the people that I'm talking to that think I'm rigid are so arrogantly and egoically attached to what they think they know. They don't even know that they don't know. And I call that unconscious arrogance. You don't know that you don't know, but you act as if you do know. That's, you know? I feel like so yeah. many people suffer with that unconscious arrogance. Oh gosh, yes. But I, what I did was afterwards, I tried it on for size. This was only a couple of months ago. I tried it on for size and I went, wow, you know, where else am I rigid? Am I rigid? And do I hold on too tightly? So I had to really put myself through that as well. Now, what I would like, I I hope to think at my age as well, especially doing, having done the work, is that I will go, I will try everything up a size. And if it makes sense for me, I will move. I will shift in a heartbeat, you know? Um, And I just wish we were more like this in the world. Like your intuition, that's your wiser part, isn't it? You know, you just know that higher, wiser part of you that we all do this. We go, we throw it up there, don't we? We go, gosh, I wonder what I'm going to do about blah, blah, blah. Sure enough, you're out the back doing the gardening. Boom, there it is. Isn't it two days later? There's the answer. Yeah. Anyway, so 28 to 35. And then and then if you're a couple, do a values elicitation. So this is Claire Graves' work. And just Google values elicitation, Claire Graves, C-L-A-R. I think it's a couple of women in Melbourne that actually do. I can't remember their names. It's a special elicitation where you actually can elicit what your true values are. Now, when you can elicit your true values. Now, let's just say, Sean, what's your partner's name? Benny. Benny. Let's just say Benny is all about security. One of his highest values is security. One of my highest values is learning Mm -hmm. and so uh, this is even over love for me if I don't learn I die and fun so if I can't have fun while I'm learning now doesn't that make sense when you see me as a facilitator yep 100% and I have to learn while I'm teaching so I'm a learn teach teach learn that's a a flow of you know the process now let's just say Benny is all about security that's a a value yeah Mm -hmm. and let's say you're all about excitement yeah and risk can you see straight away if you didn't know that you will go through the honeymoon stage of the relationship you will fall in love you will have this love for it each other and then something significant will come up in your life he'll want to buy a house you'll want to go traveling around the world and live out of a backpack he'll be going well what'll happen at the end of it we would have had no money and you'll be going but who cares what about all the beautiful life experiences when you can understand each other's values then you can manage those values together does that make sense it does it really really does and i love it that's a great analogy and i love it when you um personalize it like that too yeah well you know benny's probably the one that jumps out of a plane and you're saying no stay here yeah he'd be more likely to be that one (laughs) 
Ah, there you go. Um, so 28 to 35. So we love that. 35 to 42, like I said, now you've got a bit of maturity coming about you. 35, you're, you really are quite settled into who you are and you're just head down, bum up, really. You know, this is when people work long hours. If you've got young children, maybe think about it. Or often when you see parents who they become parents the second time out round, they'll say, I regret all of the time I stayed away from my children when they were little. And so 35, 42, yeah, just, you're just polishing again. Like I said, power years, you can, you're really building your bank of ability. You're applying that corporate ladder if that's what you're in and then of course da, 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 42 hits 42 and what happens at 42 all of a sudden you go what the hell is happening to my life you become disillusioned and the seven year cycle from 42 to 49 is actually disillusionment so the reason is because by the time you're about 44 you've experienced all the emotions you're ever going to experience and so what else is there now a lot of us don't actually have any awareness like around this like i said we we're talking about this with somebody the other day and i said two people who enter a relationship and have little self-awareness it's like two toddlers running around with very sharp knives both are going to get very hurt and they won't know why they'll just blame the other person yeah so when you hit 42 43 around there you've usually like i said experienced all those emotions and now what else is there so the brain's going well where's going where's my hit going to come from so that's when a lot of people who are unaware go out and have affairs they'll go out and buy a you know maserati they'll go and do some sabbatical and you know walk for 500 miles across the sahara whatever it might be and that's okay to do that and the commonwealth bank i remember i was splitting up with my um, husband at this time i was about 44 and i remember i was driving home one time and the commonwealth bank had an ad talk about market i I don't know whether they knew this or not, but they nailed it. <laughs> it said, at 42, I'll start again. And I was like, whether they've done the stats that most people break up around this time, who knows? And so when you start to hit that, and I had a beautiful friend of mine just recently get counsel from me, and I've known her for years, and she's a you know a dynamic senior leader of multinational global co- company. And she was feeling really disillusioned. And she said, look, I feel like I need to start my own company or do something on my own. And I said, I feel like you've got another gig in you. You know, I just felt like she wasn't ready yet. And I said, you're only a baby. And she laughed. So I took her through the seven year cycles and I went, this is 42. She's 42. She goes, oh my God, <laughs> like blew her brains out. And I said, get smart in this seven year cycle. Do the work in this seven year cycle. Like, yes, you're not going to be that excited, but you know, you're going to be disillusioned, but then tick it off and go, right, what am I unhappy with? Because this is what happens at 28. Someone just recently, you know, like, and I'm, very, I'm so careful on this because everyone thinks it's about them. I did a thing on ghosting on social media just recently. Yes, yeah, I, no saw idea. That. Maybe. I loved it. I thought it again, it just, it, I want another one of those things. It just rings so true and people don't talk about it. So yeah, I'm right. glad you did. Well, you wait, I've got a few more coming out. <laughs> um, but it's so interesting. I had so many friends go, was that about me? And I'm like, no. I love you, you know, but at least we're connected. So I'm, I'm very conscious of what I say on these things because I don't want, you know, a lot of people know me and then they'll get paranoid about it. I go, if, you, if you're not willing to actually receive feedback and it's really hard for someone to give it to you, I won't waste my breath. So yeah. I just go, if you're going to be in my circle and I have to work that hard to get you to bring you to a, a, a realm of self-awareness, it's, I don't have enough. I'm on the other side of the mountain now. So I don't have enough years to waste, you know, spending five years educating someone on their own self-awareness. So 42, sit in it, start to, to, to make notes, become awareness, go, wow, you know what? I've never really actually liked doing that. And you know what? Something And start to try, go back to 28 again and start to try a bunch of whole different things. So it's the seven-year cycle of disillusionment, but it's also the seven-year cycle of really developing true intuition. Now, it blows my mind how many people think they're intuitive. You know, like they'll go, they'll be 25. They'll go, oh, that's, I'm intuitive. I go, oh, love. That's your ego talking again. <laughs> yeah. And, and I think also 21 to 28 want to show you that they're getting it right. So they don't drop into vulnerable curiosity, vulnerable curiosity. So just sit in that space of being with your partner. If they're driving you up the wall, bring it in. Bring it in first to self, then come out to others. But the trouble is we go out to others before we bring it in, don't we? We do. I'll make you responsible for my unhappiness. I'll make you responsible for the fact that we're not financially stable. I'll make you, instead of going, if you want to see yourself, just be in a relationship with someone. And that can be at work. It can be intimately. It can be anything. And so just start to journal, just start to work out whatever it looks like. Yeah. But we develop, and we develop our intuition. Because why? Because now you've got all the emotion. Doesn't make sense? You've done 
the journey of life. Now, I also do the broomstick theory. And I know some of you are doing this on audio. I've got a ruler in front of me. And so intuition, I've always been highly intuitive. Yeah. So, and I've never trusted it. When I was younger, I didn't have any clue. And I'll tell you, look at this. So even though I had it in me, my insecurity and lack of self-awareness made me paranoid. That's the other end of the broomstick. So paranoia and intuition are opposite ends of the broomstick. So that's why you have to understand yourself and you have to have a bank full of emotional and life experiences to draw from so you can be discerning on whether it's paranoia or intuition. Does that make sense? It makes perfect sense. Okay, great. And so, you know, people go, oh, oh, I intu- I just felt it. Like I met him at the bar. We'd had five cocktails and I just intuitively felt like it's going to be my life partner. And it's like, that's not your intuition at all. Yeah. That's your paranoia. They're going to be left on the shelf or, or maybe, you know, whatever. I'm glad you're like, <laughs> okay. So, cause it was a joke. So we develop, start to develop your intuition. So 42, 49, when you reach 49, 49 then becomes, if you have done the work, ego maturity. So you are becoming mature around your ego. You drop into grace. I wrote a little book around, it's called My Neglected Friends. And the three greatest things that we can gather in life are curiosity, grace, and humility. You know, they're three great friends. And so hopefully by the time you've reached 49, 50, you've got a bit of grace about you. You've got some humility because you've really hit some hard times in your life. You've hurt, you've suffered, you've grieved, you've pained, you've loved, you've lost, you've been joyful, you've been sad, you've been, you know, all of those emotions come together to show you about humanity and so 49 to 56 is now you're starting to think about your legacy and so this legacy you're starting to think about you're starting to ask questions like well what do I want what impact do I want to leave and and now when you do the Claire Graves work you're also coming out of or into I should say an entrepreneurial but altruistic altruistic age I do want to make an impact on the planet but I do want to also you know, get the rewards of that, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then 5663 is about really hunkering down with your legacy and, and really legacy impact, giving back, all those sort of things continues on then until you're about 84. Wow. And then you start again. Yeah. And then you start again, jumping out of planes. Exactly. I love it. It's, as I say, it's, I just find it so fascinating because we're all on this journey, like we're all on this planet together and everybody goes through similar feelings like everybody as you say by the time you get to a certain age everybody's felt grief and loss and happiness and you know all of the feelings that it just makes sense to me that we would want to I guess this is a part of like I may be doing the work but it makes sense to me that we would want to learn about ourselves because um mm. it's a quote that keeps coming up in my life at the minute and it's you know it's a little cheesy but I like it, it it's true the the most important and the hardest relationship you'll ever have in your life is the one that you have with yourself so that I guess is my own little mantra going into 37 at the moment it's you know we've been through a heck of a, a heck of a couple of years to give you some insight so when we started when you and I first uh, worked together over a year ago I was getting ready to get married I was 35 Benny would have been 42 and <laughs> <laughs> um yeah and so after after the wedding I think as well it being such a big life moment personally mm-hmm. I think I think you know Benny probably did start to get to that point of questioning what is not necessarily what is right right or wrong but what is right or wrong for him what is acceptable what is not acceptable you know how does he want to be treated by people in his life by people he works with or works for family members all of that and I think that sort of led him to what would be typically known as the midlife crisis Mm. and for him that that was very much I guess identifying and learning his own mental health or looking back and looking back at your family history and going this was a great moment and this was not and how has that impacted me and turned me into this you know 42 year old person I just find it so so fascinating and (laughs) that's cool and right when you were were talking about that in our trainings I was living it Mm. I was watching you know watching the man I love the man I just married go through this what was actually a really troubling time and then the impacts that that's had oh professionally and personally for him and then personally for us as our relationship it's been it's been one hell of a journey but what I can really really gladly say is that he really stopped lived in it is still living in it but he's 
done the work. Doing the work. Yeah, he's doing the work, exactly. And I couldn't be prouder of him. Couldn't be more proud. Because the thing is, which is just beautiful, because this is the hard thing about relationships, I think, is that we're not like we and it's mainly unconscious but we seek out relationships to give ourselves security yet you can climb into bed some nights and be lying beside a stranger and you can't reach them you can hug them and you can't reach them and so but and that's that willingness it's like being a parent you know allowing your children to have their own journey and because I always love this story about Jackson and I and how you know Jackson and I are very very similar and I won't go into the whole details of it and this was so he was coming at, so he was 14 to 21 coming at 18, 19 or something. And, and I, I ended up saying, you're going back to your father's. Like, I'm, you know, I'm sending you home. And uh, wait, I won't do any sarcastic little comments. Like, when it's live, it's not recorded, you see. You can't play. <laughs> but I, I won't tell you what I said, you know. It's about, yeah. Anyway. Really <laughs> and so he didn't get on the plane. So I had some conditions about living with me. And that was, you know, speak to me properly or treat me with respect, get a job, clean the dog poo on the balcony, you know, whatever. And so to me, in my experience, they were very nominal expectations for him. And I also was getting concerned about him because he was in the 14 to 21 age group. He had finished school. America, he wasn't going, you know, he hasn't, he just, I can't remember whether he'd finished. Yeah. So he'd finished school. Um, America's very judgmental when it comes to, you know, education and going to college. Like it's like, there's a, it's ridiculous because the whole, like you look at all that whole creative sector. We don't cater for them. There's an amazing movie called, there's a new trait and it's not a temperament trait. It's a trait called highly sensitive person, HSP. It's just been discovered. And the movie is called, or the documentary is called Sensitive, The Untold Story. And they use Alanis Morissette as the as an example. Oh, it's just phenomenal. And there's 20% of the population that sit there. And they usually are creative people. Now you take those creative people who, you know, they get, oh, anyway, I won't even go into it. That's another whole uh, podcast. But I sent him back to Australia. He didn't get on the plane. He got a job, da, 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 the whole thing. We end up finding our way back to each other. And then he would say to me, wake me up at night. And he'd been out with his friends or whatever. And he'd wake me up upset. And he'd go, why did you not say sorry? For throwing me out. You never said sorry. And I'd be like, sorry, me. Why are I, I can't it? it became this typical transactional analysis, parent child. And that happened so often. And then one time he said to me, you know, when we were fighting, I used to listen to the song, Ozzy Osbourne, Mama, I'm Coming Home. And I had never heard of it. And I started, I played it and I'm in the car. And the first time I play it, I'm angry. I'm like, are you, like, I'm listening to the words, but I'm listening to the words through my own experience. Mm-hmm. People think they're empathic. It blows my mind. Or they say they're empaths. And I go, oh my God, we're so self-righteous, aren't we? There's very, people got, now, highly sensitive people will pick up energies, but I was so angry because it was like, you know, what about me? And you don't know what it was like for me. And I was doing everything for you and this, that, and the other, you know, second time it still hurt. Like I was still like angry. And then the third time I thought I'm going to make a decision and I decided that I was going to try it on for size. So I listened to it. I took myself out of the picture, out of the experience. And I imagined that I was Jackson. I imagined that I was 18. I was hurting. I was living in America. My best friend was in Australia. My my father was in Australia. I felt lonely. My mother had to leave me, if, you know, whatever, since at the moment we arrived in America to end up going back to Australia to get the work because I, you know, wasn't making money here. And I bawled my eyes out. I just gutturally sobbed and sobbed and sobbed. I couldn't play it for, I must have had to play it like a dozen times before I stopped crying. And I felt what it was like to be in his experience. And I think where when your cup's empty, it's hard to do. It's hard to sit in the space of another person. Like, you know, we can be so, we listen to it for ourselves or we listen to it and we go, well, I'm, I'm there and I've done that. And, I, and we go, no, I always go, no, we're, we're all doing the dance. It's mm-hmm. just a circle. That's all. It's hard for everybody. And my hope is that we can drop into that sensitivity long enough. And my, I've, I've got a, my, one of my new, it's a leadership model that I've created called serve forward, lean back. And so rarely do we serve forward to others, you know, to truly hold the space for another person. And rarely can we lean back knowing 100% that that person behind me has got my back. So your beautiful partner probably come to, come to a place where it was like, I have boundaries now. I'm making decisions around how I'm going to treat myself and how I'm going to treat others and how you're going to treat me. And some people don't like that, you know. So, yeah, it's interesting. Anyway, I love this stuff. Well, Terry, I think that we've covered all of the seven year cycles in the seven year cycles. Um, in seven minutes, seven year in- cycles in seven minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you can turn that one into a reel and put that, put it to like an edited down version of like quick sevens. Thank you so much for sharing your time and coming onto the show. I really, really do appreciate it. I know that you're busy and we did have to 
work towards some time differences for this one because you're back in the states and it is your birthday so happy birthday oh thank you so put much. that up there i hope you had it i hope you've had a good day i'm really grateful for you coming on sharing your expertise and your personal experiences as well thank you so much well you're you're just an incredible human being sean truly so keep doing all the amazing work that you're doing thank you so guys that's a wrap for this week I'd like to extend another huge, huge thank you to Terry for taking the time to come on the show and for sharing the seven year cycles with all of us. I hope that you guys all found this topic as interesting as I do. If you want to know more about Terry and her new venture, Ignite Worldwide, then you can follow Terry on Instagram at Ignite Worldwide 2022. That link, along with Terry's website and socials, is listed in the show notes for you. So go and give them a little click and a follow. As for the show this week, guys, that's all, folks. Look after yourselves, stay safe, and I'll see you next time.